The Life of Kaido from One Piece Kaido of the Beasts, renowned as the world's strongest creature, is the Governor General of the Beasts Pirates and formerly one of the four emperors that ruled over the New World. He is also the father of Yamato. Welcome to the Yamagi! Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Also, we just released some brand new merch. If you'd like to show your support for the channel even further while at the same time repping stylish clothing, be sure to check that out as well. The store is linked below. YouTube has been unsubscribing users from channels like Lately, so if you're a fan of us, please do us a favor and double check to see if you're still subscribed. It only takes a second and it helps us a ton here at Amagi. And with that out of the way, let's get into the video. Past. Kaido was born on the Grand Line 59 years ago. He resided in the Vodka Kingdom as a child, which invaded and looted other towns in order to be able to afford membership in the world government, and was considered its strongest soldier by the time he was 10 years old. Three years later, Kaido started questioning this system, and the king, not knowing what to do with him, decided to sell him to the marines, in return for the right to attend the next levely. However, Kaido escaped from the battleship carrying him and immediately received a bounty of 70 million. Kaido allowed himself to be captured numerous times afterward for the purpose of eating the food on the battleships and escaping with ease once he had had his fill. 44 years ago, at the age of 15, Kaido was on Hashinosu, overwhelming numerous pirates in combat when he was invited by Edward Newgate to join the Rocks Pirates, under the command of Rocks D. Zebek. Upon being enlisted as an apprentice, Kaido formed a sibling-like bond with a fellow crewmate, Charlotte Linlin, and proved to be a dominant force of the group. 38 years ago, the Rocks Pirates clashed with Gold D. Roger and Monkey D. Garp on God Valley and were defeated, resulting in the crew disbanding. On the day the Rocks Pirates fell, Lin Lin gave the Uo Uo Nomi model Seryu to Kaido, putting him in her debt, which she considered to be a lifelong one. Since becoming a pirate, he had only been defeated seven times, and captured 18 times by the Marines and the other four members of the Four Emperors. On one of those occasions where he had been arrested, he was taken to Punk Hazard and imprisoned in the Third Research Institute where Dr. Vegapunk was able to extract a sample of Kaido's lineage factor, allowing the scientists to replicate his devil fruit, although the results were deemed to be unsatisfactory. At least 33 years ago, Kaido escaped the facility and began building his own crew. While escaping, Kaido encountered a young Iyernarian boy named Albert, who was held captive at Punk Hazard and experimented on by the world government. After freeing him and demolishing the facility, Kaido recruited Albert as his right-hand man, and noticing his extraordinary strength, gave him his epithet that king. Kaido was not recognized as one of the top 10 pirates in the world until around the time when Roger was executed. He, along with Shanks, then joined Whitebeard and Big Mom among the ranks of the four emperors. 28 years later, Kurozumi Higurashi approached Kaido with an offer of territory to build weapons factories on in a nation known for its skilled craftsmen, allowing him to increase his might further. Kaido agreed to this and began occupying Wano country once Higurashi's relative Kurozumi Orochi had seized control of the shogunate. In exchange, for the ability to grow his weapons enterprise, Kaido served as a protector for Orochi. It was around this time that Kaido had a son named Yamato, who was actually born as his daughter. Yamato later told him that he wanted to be Odin, and Kaido beat him in response. 25 years ago, Kaido confronted Kozuki Odin at the Shogun's castle after the latter attempted to kill Orochi. Kaido and Orochi then made a deal with Odin. If Odin danced naked in the flower capital once a week, citizens would be spared. They also promised to leave Wano in five years. Afterwards, Kaido flew over the Shogun's castle in his dragon form. 23 years ago, Kaido fought with Gekko Moria in the Ringo region of Wano country and defeated him. 20 years ago, when Odin and his nine retainers were on their way to Onigashima, Kaido and his crew confronted them in the Udon region. In the ensuing battle, Odin managed to inflict Kaido with a permanent wound on his torso, possibly the first he ever received. However, Kaido knocked Odin unconscious when Odin was distracted by Kurozumi Higurashi, who had impersonated a kidnapped Momonosuke. Sometime after the battle, Kaido killed Higurashi for her interference. On the day of Odin's execution, Kaido joined Orochi in witnessing the execution. Odin then made a deal with Kaido to let those who survived the execution go free, and Kaido gave him an hour. Kaido was amused to watch Odin as the latter endured standing in a pot of boiling oil while holding his retainers above his head on a board. Although Odin successfully survived one hour in the boiling pot, Kaido and Orochi decided to execute Odin and his retainers regardless. As Odin's retainers fled, Kaido apologized to him for Higurashi's interference before shooting Odin in the head. After Odin's death, Kaido attacked and set Odin Castle ablaze before Odin's retainers returned. While threatening Momonosuke, he told the boy that his father was a foolish lord. However, Kaido 
decided to leave Momonosuke in the burning castle instead of killing him outright. During that time, Kaido also managed to discover the road poneglyph that was in the submerged portion of Wano, thanks to Jack's fishman nature. Eventually, not long after Odin's death, Kaido confronted a chained up Yamato for using Haushoku Haki to knock out many of his subordinates. He thought that his son's ability to use Haushoku Haki was promising, but he still insisted that he should die for calling himself Odin. Kaido decided to lock up his son inside of a cave in Onigashima for an entire month with a few other samurai. He placed a bunch of swords inside the cave so that the samurai would fight for a single portion of food. Before leaving, he told his son that he wished all of this upon himself for calling himself Odin. After the samurai broke out of the cave, Kaido was informed of this by his subordinates. At some point after taking over Wano, Kaido additionally faced the thief Shutenmaru. About three to four years ago, Kaido and his top subordinates were away from Onigashima on an expedition. The spade pirates invaded during this time period. When Kaido returned, he was furious to find his dragon statue destroyed. Sometime within the last four years, Kaido began collaborating with Warlord of the Sea, Don Quixote do Flamingo, and the rogue marine scientist Caesar Clown to create an army of artificial Zoan devil fruit users via Smile. Summit War Saga. When Whitebeard was on his way to save Ace from his execution at Marineford, Kaido alongside King tried to attack him. However, Shanks intercepted Kaido before he could reach Whitebeard. It's unknown how this encounter ended, but Shanks arrived unscathed at Marineford by the end of the war, during the time skip. At some point during the time skip, Kaido secretly recruited the on-air pirates as one of his subordinate crews. After receiving a letter from Kurozumi Kanjiro, Orochi revealed to Kaido the return of Odin's retainers thanks to Kozuki Toki's powers. Although Kaido did not fully believe it at first, he requested that the samurai be caught alive since he wanted to question them. Orochi assured Kaido of Kanjiro's trustworthiness and explained the spy's past. Dress Rosa Saga Kaido went up to Balloon Terminal where he encountered Uruj who learned of his intention to attempt suicide and allowed him to proceed. Kaido jumped off the Sky Island and landed 10,000 meters below on the Kid Pirate's base. However, he only received a minor headache and found himself face to face with the Kid, On Air, and Hawkins Alliance. After cursing Whitebeard for having been able to die, Kaido yelled that Doflamingo needed to make preparations for battle before promising to start a massive war due to the world boring him. Kaido then offered the Kid Pirates and the Hawkins Pirates to join him. While Hawkins surrendered, Eustace Kid and Killer refused and fought the Emperor. Kaido then easily defeated them, taking Kid prisoner and forcing Kid's crew into serving him and Orochi. Whole Cake Island Saga After Jack's defeat, Apu contacted Kaido in his fortress, revealing that they had lost all contact with Jack's fleet after they went to attack Zou for a second time. After learning that Jack's attempt to rescue Doflamingo failed, Kaido was enraged at not being able to acquire any more smiles, which means that he could not gain any more gifters. As he drowned his sorrows in alcohol, Kaido's despair turned to rage when his subordinates mentioned Monkey D. Luffy and Trafalgar Law, causing him to smash one out of the building with his mace. Kaido angrily stated that the two supernovas were nowhere near him in power, pointing to the defeated Eustace Kid as an example. Levely Arc as the news of Luffy's exploits at Toto Island spread across the world, Kaido read the newspaper and angrily wondered why Luffy was in Big Mom's territory. A few days later, he was contacted by Big Mom, who demanded the right to kill Luffy. He rejected her request since he wished to take care of Luffy himself, but Big Mom was unbending as she reminded him of a debt. Wano Country Saga after getting drunk, Kaido flew to Kuri in Wano Country. On the way, he found Speed and Tama and attacked them after hearing a report of the former's treachery. He then went to Okobore Town and called out to Jack to bring Luffy and Law to him. While flying over Okobore, he recognized Shutenmaru and asked him to become his subordinate. Kaido was drunk and in a partial stupor, which was a sight that unnerved even the likes of Jack, a subordinate known for his own violent streaks, fearing what Kaido would do in this state. Hawkins then came out and told Kaido that Luffy and Law were hiding in the ruins of Odin Castle, and Kaido immediately flew towards it and shot a heat breath at it, instantly destroying it. However, he was then hit in the head with a giant punch from Luffy. After Kaido was sent crashing into the ground, Luffy got his attention by yelling at him. Kaido attacked with a fire breath, but Luffy dodged and used Elephant Gatling. Kaido then returned to his human form, and Luffy activated Gear 4th Bound Man and assaulted Kaido with Kong Organ. Luffy's attacks were ineffective as Kaido then struck Luffy with Raimehake, rendering him unconscious with just one hit. Kaido stood over Luffy, scoffing at the idea his opponent aspired to be Pirate King after bringing him down with such ease. Though Luffy was unconscious, Kaido noticed that Luffy was still glaring at him. He then ordered his men to imprison Luffy, deciding to break his spirit and turn him into a subordinate. While walking away, Kaido learned that Luffy possessed Haushoku Haki. When 
when the latter instinctively knocked out some of his men. Kaido found that attribute worth some credit, but was equally quick to order Luffy locked up. Deciding to take care of Lyle later, Kaido departed to go drink again, annoyed that he sobered up. When he heard that Big Mom and her crew were attempting to enter Wano, Kaido ordered his subordinates to stop them. He then heard that King knocked the Queen Mama Chanter off the waterfall. While Queen was at Udon, Kaido informed him through a smart Tanishi about Komodosaki's death. Kaido then watched the broadcast of Shimotsuki Yasui's execution. After Big Mom was brought to Onigashima, Kaido ordered his subordinates to release her from her cuffs. The two emperors then began to argue and clashed weapons, causing the skies above Onigashima to split in two. The two emperors continued fighting throughout the night. Kaido and Big Mom eventually stopped their fight and came to an agreement. After speaking with Apu about his return over the smart Tanishi, Kaido announced to his subordinates that he and Big Mom were forming a pirate alliance to take over the world, shocking many who heard the unexpected news. As the Beast's pirates were preparing for the upcoming feast on the day of the fire festival, Kaido asked for his son before he was informed of the Tobiropo's arrival. Kaido, King, and Jack then had a meeting with the Tobiropo. After having Bao Huang go over the day's schedule, Kaido then gave the Tobiropo the mission of finding his son Yamato, saying that he would let them battle one of the All-Stars for their position if they succeeded. Kaido then enjoyed the festival with Orochi and did not mind if Black Maria decided to stay. They were briefly interrupted when Kanjiro arrived with Momonosuke. Kaido told his men to stand down as Kanjiro was Orochi's ally. As Kanjiro delivered Momonosuke to Orochi, Kaido expressed his disappointment with the boy. He also learned that the plot to stop the Kozuki Rebellion failed and that Luffy, Roronora Zoro, Kid, and Killer were present on the island. He later went to the performance stage to announce a project dubbed New Onigashima. He proceeded to explain his plans to find the ancient weapons and the One Piece and to transform Wano Country. When Orochi objected, Kaido promptly decapitated him. He further explained that he planned to move his base to the flower capital, turn Wano into a pirate nation, and have Yamato become Shogun. He also gave Orochi's subordinates a choice to join him or die. Out of self-preservation, Orochi's subordinates submitted to Kaido. The Emperor then turned to Momonosuke and asked for his name, offering to spare him if he denied being Odin's son. After Momonosuke refused to lie, Kaido was surprised when the scabbards arrived and attacked him. As Kaido was pushed to the lower floor, the scabbards managed to inflict wounds upon him. While speaking to the scabbards, Kaido attempted to discourage them by stating that their pirate allies would betray them. After hearing Luffy's declaration of war, Kaido transformed into his dragon form and flew to the roof of the Skull Dome with the scabbards hanging onto him. On the top of the dome, Kaido commented on the Mink Tribe's ability to transform into their Sulong forms as he was joined by Jack, Nangi, and some Beast's pirates when they prepared to fight the Mink Forms. Forces. Jack suffered severe injuries from his fight with the Sulong Minx, prompting Kaido to step in before Jack could be killed. The Emperor then resumed his battle with the Scabbards. Kaido tried scorching the samurai with fire breath, but Kinemon sliced the flames and cut Kaido's mouth. Kaido roared lightning at them, but they dodged around, and each struck him in turn. Kaido was confused on how their attacks could injure him. After Raizo reflected Kaido's Boto breath back at him, four of the scabbards, Ashura, Kinemon, Denjiro, and Inuarashi, replicated Odin's two-sword style stance and struck Kaido's scar with the same attack that made it. While recovering from that attack, Kaido remarked that he was reminded of Odin, but the scabbards did not have the same strength as him. Kaido then retaliated with a roar that created wind scythes, one of which sliced off Kikunoji. Kikunojo's left arm. After Kinemon cauterizes Kikunojo's wound, Kaido returned to human form and praised the samurai for their determination. Continuing the battle, Kaido gained the upper hand and began overwhelming the scabbards and later incapacitated them. Soon, Kaido used his power to lift the entire island of Onigashima above sea level and began moving it to the flower capital. As the island was floating to its destination, Kaido was joined by Big Mom, whom he provided fire and lightning for Prometheus and Zeus to feed on in order to recharge, as Big Mom told him to leave Nico Robin alive. Kaido asked if her daughter, Charlotte Pudding, can read the poneglyphs, but Big Mom decided not to wait for her power to awaken. When she asked where he planned on dropping Onigashima, Kaido told her that he would drop it on a castle in the flower capital that still stands as a symbol to the Kozuki. Big Mom started inquiring about the road poneglyph, causing Kaido to tell her that her true intentions were showing. She replied that she still considered Kaido as a little brother and reminded him that she was the one who gave him his devil fruit on the day the rocks fell, which she believed was Kaido's life debt to her. He brushed her off and said that they could talk more about it after they find the One Piece. Later on, Kid, Killer, Law, Zoro, and Luffy arrived on the roof. After Luffy had spoken to the wounded Kinemon, and La had teleported the scabbards to a safe place, Kaido attempted to attack Luffy, but Luffy dodged it and struck back with a powerful gear third punch that made Kaido bleed, shocking both emperors. Though initially stunned that Luffy's attack harmed him, Kaido regained his composure and struck back with his club. Luffy managed to avoid the full brunt of the attack, but was still grazed. However, Kaido was still impressed that Luffy did not go down easily. 
After Big Mom attempted to attack Luffy, Kaido launched another attack on the Straw Hat Captain, but Law teleported Luffy to another spot. Kaido then told Big Mom to step back as he wanted to see the strength of the five members of the Worst Generation. Zoro, Killer, Luffy, Kid, and Law then unleashed their own attacks on Kaido, but the Emperor transformed into his dragon form and joined Big Mom in the sky. Kaido used Kaifu to unleash several wind blades on the five members of the Worst Generation, but they managed to avoid them. Luffy got close to Kaido and struck him with Gomu Gomu no Kong rifle, which injured him. Kid moved underneath Kaido and grabbed his head with his robot before slamming him into the roof with Slam Gibson, which also caused him pain. Law maneuvered around Kaido with his powers and tried to attack his heart with Gamma Knife. Kaido shook them off and admitted that they had learned how tough his defense was. Killer started running along Kaido's body and used Kama Sonic to damage him from the inside. However, Killer got struck by Big Mom's Indra. While Killer was falling, Kaido tried to chomp on him, but Luffy kicked him away with Gomu Gomu no Rocket Schneider. Kaido then prepared to use Bodo Breath on Luffy, but Zoro had Law teleport him in front of Kaido so he could cut the flames. Zoro then attempted to attack Kaido with Enma, but Zoro missed his attack and ended up cutting off one of the horns of the Skull Dome, while Kaido tried to figure out why Odin's presence could be felt in that sword. After Big Mom used Ten Men Daijizai Tenjin on the opposing pirates, Kaido hit Luffy with Bodo Breath, but to Kaido's surprise, Luffy came out unscathed, claiming that it was his guts that protected him. He then struck Kaido with Gomu Gomu no Kong Gatling. After the pummeling he received from Luffy, Kid and Killer tried to continue on the offensive, but Kaido stopped them by creating some twisters. Luffy, who got worn out from using Gear 4, got caught in the wind. As Kaido chomped on Luffy, Zoro used all three of his swords and sliced through Kaido's scales. After recognizing Enma, Kaido once again launched Wind Blades at the five supernovas. Enjoying the battle, Kaido later transformed into his hybrid form. As the fight raged on, Kaido and Big Mom kept facing against the bloodied members of the Worst Generation, with him complimenting Luffy for keeping the light in his eyes. Per Big Mom's suggestion, they both attacked simultaneously with the Hawkeye move against the Worst Generation, only for Zoro to momentarily block it, which resulted in him taking a lot of damage and a part of the Skull Dome being destroyed. As Luffy tried to attack Kaido, they both faced off in a heated battle where they both tried to land a hit on the other, which would eventually result in Luffy getting knocked out again. As Big Mom was about to fall to the sea, Kaido attacked Zoro so that Prometheus could go help her, only to be suddenly attacked on the neck with an injection shot from Law, with Kaido retaliating for it afterwards. Looking at Luffy, Kaido laughed at him for glaring at him a second time while still unconscious, and then mockingly asking Zoro or Law whether he should crush Luffy's eyes, brain, or heart. Before Kaido could do anything, Zoro attacked with an Ashurabake Moja no Tawamure. Although Kaido remained standing, he received a permanent scar, due to Zoro's usage of Haoshoku Haki. As he prepared to finish Zoro off, Law tried to interfere so Kaido struck both with Raime Hake and was disappointed that they could have conquered the world if they joined his crew. Luffy stood back up and rebuffed the sentiment. After Luffy admitted to figuring out how Kaido infused Haoshoku Haki into attacks, Kaido confirmed that only a handful of people were able to do it, including him. He then prepared to strike Luffy again with his club, but Luffy blocked the attack and then struck Kaido repeatedly without making any contact, eventually knocking the Emperor down to the ground. After Kaido got back up, he told Luffy that he seemed to be enjoying this fight with him because he kept smiling when the risk kept increasing. With this, both captains resumed their fight, clashing with each other through Haoshoku Haki-infused strikes. Despite Luffy's new ability, Kaido was still able to defeat him and knock him off the roof of the castle, regretting that he was unable to give Luffy a clear, sure death as proof of victory, while cryptically stating that Luffy was not Joy Boy. Being alerted by Bao Huang about Momonosuke's current location, Kaido ordered her to announce his victory through Onigashima while he chased after Momonosuke himself through the hole Big Mom had made in his castle beforehand. Kaido eventually found Momonosuke and Kinemon in the first floor attic and prepared an attack coded in Haoshoku Haki, striking through Kinemon's swords as Momonosuke cried for the latter while being carried off by Shinobu. Kinemon barely survived the attack and hopelessly attempted to buy some time, only for Kaido to impale him on the ground. Kaido then pursued Momonosuke and Shinobu to the edge of Onigashima, cornering them. But before he could kill the boy, Shinobu used her ability to escape the floating island by breaking the portion of land they were on. Kaido then heard Yamato call out from the top of the Skull Dome, ready to fight him. Kaido transformed back into his dragon form and flew back to the rooftop. There, he mocked Yamato for attempting to rebel against him, insisting that he should just give up and become the Shogun as Wano as he had planned. Yamato rebuffed Kaido's intentions once more and declared allegiance to Luffy, stating that the latter would be the one to beat him and throw the Emperor out of Wano. With that, Kaido transformed into his human beast form and clashed with Yamato. Kaido began to emphasize how useful Yamato will be to his future arsenal. After Yamato attacked him in his hybrid form, Kaido revealed that he went through great troubles to obtain the Ino Ino Nomi model Okuchi no Makami, which he had never intended on Yamato eating. The father and son pair then faced each other in both of their hybrid forms. He began to further strengthen
stress how incredibly valuable Yamato's fruit was, and that it was a shame to let a wannabe Odin eat it. While he exchanged more swings with Yamato, he claimed that the devil fruit was the guardian deity of Wano, so Yamato would have to protect Wano for Kaido. As Yamato rejected the idea, Kaido indicated that even though Orochi was Wano's tyrant, he still transformed the country into a weapons factory, a favorable action for Kaido. As Kaido rejected the idea of Yamato helping the samurai and freeing Wano, he attacked his son with Boto Breath, which clashed with Yamato's own icy breath, creating a swirl between them. After fighting for some time, Kaido attacked his son with powerful flying strikes. Kaido then confirmed he was attacking Yamato with the intent to kill. He said that because he bore the heavy burden of calling himself Odin, he must be prepared for an all-out war and not just a family squabble. After Yamato confronted him over why he stole Yamato's as well as Wano's freedom, he declared that there were no easy answers in this world. Then they both attacked each other with Raime Hake, creating a clash of advanced Haushoku. As soon as Yamato's Kagamiyama cracked, they both repeatedly struck at each other with their Kanabos. With Kaido expressing that Yamato's attempts at gaining friends and allies were all in vain due to his origin as his child, before gaining the upper hand and furiously striking at him with his Kanabo. When Luffy and Momonosuke appeared in the sky above Onigashima, Kaido was struck by a simultaneous punch from both Luffy and Yamato, forcing him to turn into his dragon form, being amused by their attacks while also expressing his surprise at Momonosuke's adult dragon form, and explaining that the world does not need two dragons. When his Boro Breath was dodged by Momonosuke, he was punched by Luffy with a Gomu Gomu King Kong gun, then followed by Momonosuke biting him in the torso, resulting him in expressing pain. Before he could counterattack, he was once again hit by Luffy and decided to transform into his hybrid form. Both then infused their hockey and attacked each other, creating another clash of advanced hockey, which even split the sky above Onigashima, revealing the full moon previously hidden. After the clash cooled off, Kaido then turned his attention to Momonosuke, who was afraid of the height he was experiencing, attempting to finish him off for good this time, only to be blocked by Yamato again and soon afterwards by Luffy, who held him with his legs and asked Yamato to leave Kaido to him. As the island was approaching the capital, Kaido's flame clouds were losing power, leaving the island slowly crumbling, and both Kaido and Luffy continued to clash with each each other, trading blows before Kaido was knocked back by Luffy's gum gum rock gun, with Luffy simultaneously falling back. However, both quickly got up and started laughing and commented on the fight finally becoming fun. Kaido would then start drinking alcohol after returning to his normal form, to Luffy's annoyance, but he clarified to Luffy that he's doing it to become stronger as he finally acknowledges Luffy's power. When Luffy attempted to strike at Kaido, the latter went through several stages of a special state called Shuran Hake due to his alcohol consumption. In his Wadai Jogo state and upon transforming into his hybrid form, he dealt a severe blow to Luffy with Ragnaraku that created a large crack in the roof of Onigashima. Kaido entered Ochikomi Jogo mode in his dragon form and lamented over not being able to protect Onigashima and the time it would take to rebuild it before using Tatsumaki Kaifu on and approaching Luffy. He then shifted to his Naki Jogo state and returned to his hybrid form, crying as he prepared to use Raime Hake on Luffy. However, Luffy was successful in dodging this attack and landed a reverse Haushoku infused kick on Kaido's chin. The Emperor, still crying profusely, grabbed Luffy's leg with his tail and attempted to headbutt him. The two combatants had a headbutt clash powered by Haushoku Haki with their foreheads not touching. Kaido won out on the clash as Luffy remarked that Kaido's hockey was growing stronger and was sent reeling. Kaido then entered the final stage of Shuran Hake, Okori Jogo, and angrily fired off two Boro breaths before he met Luffy's rock gatling with Gandari Ryosegan. However, during the flurry of attacks, Luffy blocked a swing of Kaido's Hasakai with Haushoku Haki and managed to strike the Emperor's abdomen with a Haushoku-infused kick bolstered by Gear 2nd and Gear 3rd, seemingly damaging Kaido significantly. When Big Mom was defeated, the two pirates were in the midst of a clash with Haki-fused attacks, with Luffy being pushed back. Sensing that Lin Lin lost her battle, Kaido emitted his Haushoku Haki in rage, though Luffy was impressed that Law and Kid managed to win. Kaido then recalled how the two first met, before entering his Naki Jogo mode and bursting into tears, though Luffy responded responded by entering into Gear 4th Snake Man and barraging Kaido with Gomu Gomu no Hydra, stating that Kaido's ambition meant nothing to him, how this was his final Gear 4th, and how he wasn't stopping till he drove the King of Beasts out of Wano. Kaido was seemingly unable to respond to the omnidirectional Hydra attack, and he contemplated on how such an attack could be possible due to the innate nature of rubber, as he slowly transitioned into his Amai Jogo mode. Kaido manages to escape the attack using Nusubito Jogo and advanced Kenbun Shoku, before transforming into his full beast form, grabbing Luffy in his mouth and flying straight into the sky. He then let go of Luffy before firing a point-blank Boro Breath straight down, which blasted the Straw Hat Captain all the way through Onigashima. Luffy managed to escape the attack by transitioning into his Bound Man form and flying back to the top of the island. He then got above Kaido and landed a Gomu Gomu no Over Kong Gun on the Emperor, which disrupted the Boro Breath the dragon was preparing to fire. However, Kaido quickly recovered, 
third, entering his hybrid form and using Satsuriku Jogo mode to floor Luffy with Huraihake. With Luffy resolving to end this in one final hit, he quickly bounced back and charged at the Emperor with another over Kong gun, with Kaido dashing at him whilst preparing another Huraihake. However, CP0 Agent Guernica suddenly appeared and locked Luffy's attacking arm by grabbing onto it and using Tekai, allowing Kaido to knock the Straw Hat Captain down. Guernica escaped the strike, releasing just before the Emperor hit, whilst Kaido could only attack in despair as he reviled another exciting battle being sabotaged by outside influence, just like during his duel against Odin. In response, Kaido brutally attacks Guernica. Kaido returned to the castle in his dragon form where he declares that Luffy is dead and demands Momonosuke surrender to him, while also agreeing to fight anyone who still wishes to challenge him. He decrees that when Onigashima will drop on the flower capital, he will put everyone who lives in Wano to work, producing weapons, and if they die, then he'll find suitable replacements. He tells the samurai that their defiance against him incurred his wrath, and the price of failure is the loss of their freedom and hope, but until Momonosuke presents himself to him, he won't stop fighting. However, he soon hears what seems to be the beating of a drum, before being grabbed by a huge hand and dragged silly back to the top of the roof by Luffy, who has awakened his devil fruit. Luffy proceeds to swing Kaido around before slamming him into the ground. Luffy lets him go, and Kaido confesses how happy he is that Luffy survived before firing a Boto breath at him. To his shock though, Luffy reflects it back at him and it blows up in his face. He recovers and apologizes to Luffy for allowing Guernica to interfere with their duel as the two prepare for their final fight. While watching Luffy bouncing up and down, Kaido told him he awakened his devil fruit since he was turning the ground into rubber like himself, yet he felt like the transformation was akin to that of a Zoan fruit, which confused him. Nevertheless, he bit down on Luffy and swallowed him, only for Luffy to bounce around inside his insides before using Gomu Gomu no Fusen to inflate both his and Kaido's body, causing him discomfort as the two floated into the sky. Kaido tried to figure out how Luffy was able to make his body like rubber, just as Luffy was trying to stretch his arms through Kaido's eyes to launch himself out of Kaido's body using Gomu Gomu no Dashu to rocket, which caused additional discomfort to Kaido. Luffy then launched himself higher into the air and made himself a giant to step on Kaido, but Kaido evaded and chomped down on Luffy's torso. But Luffy grabbed his head and tail and started using him like a jump rope until Kaido used Boto Breath to blast him far away. As Luffy recovered and ran back to him, Kaido changed into his hybrid form and struck Luffy with Kosanze Ragnaraku, slamming his head through the roof, causing everyone in the live floor to have their eyes popped out. As Luffy pulled his head back out, Kaido remarked that their fight looked like something out of a picture book, but believed Luffy is at the end of his rope, which was confirmed when his awakened state wore off. Though Kaido himself fell to one knee, he told Luffy that after he died, he will tell everyone how valiantly he fought, but Luffy rejected this notion and changed back, assuring Kaido that he was not afraid of dying. Kaido managed to slam Luffy with Hasakai a few more times before Luffy bounced off a rock at Kaido while spinning his arms like a propeller. Kaido tried to block his attack while also trying to figure out what Luffy's power was, claiming that no one is capable of taking him down, only to get punched straight through the face by Luffy and knocked onto his back. Kaido picked himself back up and asked Luffy who he was, to which Luffy answered that he is the one who will surpass him and become the Pirate King. Kaido acknowledged that Luffy still hasn't lost his spirit and how ridiculous his power was. He admitted that he had lost a lot in this war, but believed Luffy had too, only for Luffy to retort that he would take it all back. He used Gundari Ryusegun on Luffy, but got hit multiple times by Luffy as well, whose punches stretched through him again. He then noticed smoke coming from the bottom of the roof and believed that the whole castle was on fire and everyone will burn to death. But Luffy responded that he trusts his friends to handle the problem as Kaido fired a Kaifu attack that Luffy dodged. He then watched as Luffy grabbed a bolt of lightning with a smile on his face. Luffy used Gomu Gomu no Kaminari to throw the bolt of lightning at Kaido, but he sidestepped and slammed Luffy from the side, sending him flying far away. Luffy used another lightning bolt to propel himself back to Kaido, and he quickly dodged the attack and struck Luffy on the head. As he did so, he told Luffy that having a strong devil fruit isn't enough to conquer the seas. Roger himself didn't have one, yet still became the pirate king. And Kaido said that such hurdles can only be overcome with hockey, as he hit Luffy with Dai Toku Raimei Hake, knocking him into the air again. However, Luffy grabbed Kaido while being past the storm clouds, and Kaido tried to shake Luffy off, first by hitting his arm with Hasakai, then changing into his full dragon form to hit him with Tazumaki Kaifo and Boto Breath. His efforts were futile, as not only did Luffy hang on, but he inflated his other fist to a humongous size with which to finish off Kaido. Seeing Luffy's giant fist, Kaido decided to take it head on as he enveloped himself in fire, which finally caused Luffy to let go of him, a move Kaido said was the right call. He told Luffy that Odin was burned to death, and ever since then, the people of Wano desperately clung on 
to the hope that their savior would come. He also told Luffy that his fist would never hit him because his fire would vaporize it, and he met Luffy's Gomu Gomu no Bajrang gun with his Shoryu Kayanhake. As they clashed, Kaido commended Luffy for coming so far, but believed he could not change the world. Kaido did ask, though, what kind of world Luffy wanted to create, and Luffy answered that he wanted to make a world where his friends could eat as much as they want. Kaido then remembered a conversation he had with King once, in which he stated that Joy Boy would be the one who was able to defeat him. Luffy's fist pushed through Kaido's attack and punched him so hard in the face that it broke off his left horn and sent him crashing deep into the ground. Rendered unconscious, Kaido reverted back into his human form and plummeted into Wano's magma chamber, where Big Mom had also fallen. As a result, an underwater volcano erupted from where Onigashima had previously sat, with both emperors presumably getting caught up in the explosion. Did you enjoy our video? Well, then be sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi. And make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos.